first of all, you outlined in your, your speech your five traits to success. Do you general, just want to briefly outline what they are we in can, relation to, bis to business? Okay, well, basically, the starting point for us is this passion, this desire that the top Olympians have, and which basically means you know, whatever obstacles get in the way, they, they hold on to the dream. So, yeah, it's passion, belief, and, and of course, that is about creating belief. It's not the fact that some people happen to have more confidence than others, it's the recognition that actually I might need to work on that. And there are times, of course, where we might lack belief. Uh, but it's a recognition that that is one of the most important traits. And then it's clarity um, and, and having an exact idea of what the plan is and how it will unfold and also acknowledging that um, it might change along the way, that's fine, but retaining that clarity of where it's all going is key. And then it's the whole concept of if, you, you know, if you've got a big goal, it's much easier to achieve it with other people uh, on the journey with you. It's why Steve and I run a business together, not individually. Uh, it's a whole surrounding yourself with talent. Uh, you know, that power of momentum through other people, you just push each other into further, further places. So it's that whole concept of, of you know, get great training partners, surround yourself with great people and, and you're more likely to achieve. And a quick point on that from an individual athlete's point of view or perceived to be an individual athlete's point of view, one thing we recognise is there's no such thing as an individual athlete at the highest level. There is always a team of people supporting and driving and assisting in that performance. So, you know, to, to put that into context, the last of the Olympic Games I went to, I had 13 people in my team. Um, so, so they were all very talented people. And the, the fifth and final success trade is to deliver your maximum. And uh, as, I, as I said on stage, it's about, um, you know, just making the javelin, in my, in my case, making it land one centimetre further every day. But it's going into pursuit of something that's beyond our perceived current maximum and the recognition of that space that, that is out there, that there is more potential that we all have. Because, yeah, we believe we all have this great potential. And, and you have to believe that, of course, as an Olympic athlete, to strive and push boundaries. Um, there's a lot of talk amongst small business owners in the UK that the, the embracing failure is, is less doesn't happen as much as it does in the US, whereas in the US yeah. you're sort of like rewarded if, in business yeah. if you failed. What You've obviously had you know, ups and downs in your career, what, <laughs> well, what I mean, have you learned from I think, failure? I think like any sports person, I think ultimately <laughs> you're, 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 you're judged on, on how you do, particularly with injury, which is the main, you know, the main obstacle in athletics in any sport, and how you overcome setbacks. So uh, you know, I think there's an argument, the, the, the people that never experience failure can never ultimately fulfil their true potential. Uh, because of course you learn more through through failure than you do from success. Because success is, is easy, you know. If, you, if you're on top of Russia, it's great. The real way you find out about yourself is when your career is potentially over through injury. So there is an argument that if you can create an environment that encourages people to fail, then you're more likely to be successful. But that only works if people learn from their mistakes and their failures and, and, and fix them quickly. So you know, if you keep failing, then obviously you're not going to succeed. So. Embrace failure, encourage it, but the most important thing is to adapt and, and, and to learn from it. Um, you're now in business, so how what, how's the differences in, in you know now running a business together as opposed to competing? Well, it's, it's interesting actually, that pretty, pretty much what, you know, the messages that we um, that we shout about around the five trades are exactly the same in business. It's the challenges of every one of those guys in the room as leaders of business have a challenge of driving that performance forward. So it's about how do you put passion into other people? How do you give the team the belief that they can go and pursue whatever it is you told them is the end goal? You know, what do you do to, to communicate that clarity? Um, it's exactly the same and that's where we, um, you know, we're, we're very passionate now about the translating and using our messages. And, and the, the business is, is, is quite unique in some ways because what we do is we blend motivational speaking with training. So what we, we hope to create the way by telling the stories, but then we do something about it. Because one of the frustrations Roger and I had in the early stages was telling a story and then walking away. But now, because of the business we have, we have the ability to tell the story, create the way, and then say, okay, and now we're on the journey with you. And it's a wonderful thing to be able to say that and back it up, and then go on the journey with various organizations across industries, and actually see it turn into greater performances. It's a wonderful thing. And just finally, who in the business world do you think most encompasses the, the success traits that you talk about? Any know, famous or non-famous? Well, two for me, in, and it's probably what before everyone, is Steve Jobs. Uh, in terms of the creativity, believing in, in just pushing the boundaries, delivering your maximum, being passionate, and all that stuff in, in, in the brand that will live on forever. 
in, in, in Steve Jobs is, is incredible. I'll leave it there actually. Well, I think it's always the obvious ones, Jobs, Branson, whatever. Yeah, Branson. Someone who inspired me, I met the other day, was a, a guy called Peter Hargreaves, who set up Hargreaves Ansdown, a very, very successful um, uh, financial company. And it started with him and his mate from uh, you know, their, their flat, but it was the dream, the desire, and, and the values. It was his values that, that, that you feel throughout the whole, the whole business. So he's somebody who, who I've met, and there are so many, I mean, you've got the obvious ones, but he's somebody who, who I think, you know, you know, overcame adversity, came back and just has kept the passion. You know, he's a relatively old man now, but he still loves it. He still, I'm meeting him, he talks as if he's, he's a teenager about to set up a business. He still loves it, he's worth millions. But the passion is there, and, that, and that's the thing. If you can have that passion later on in life, it's still as, it's still as hungry as when you were when you set up a business. Uh, that's something that, that we would, we would you know, love to aspire to achieve. I know, so it was the final one, but how do you think we're going to do London 2012? What are your predictions? I feel that, well, two things. Last time round, Beijing, 19 gold medals, 47 medals across the Team GB. Add that to the home advantage. And you've got to say 20 and 47 plus. I think the home advantage will have a, an effect. Um, I read somewhere just recently, if the Olympic Games was now, based on our current performers in the world, we'd actually get 18 golds. And that's a very statistical kind of current representation. Take the Olympics, take that, all the factors we're talking about, the, you know, the non-tangibles, the stuff that's really hard to quantify, put that into the melting pot, and the added passion of walking out into an Olympic arena in a British vest with British support, and that bit of pride, that bit of ownership, I think that is what will make the difference. It won't turn people who weren't going to do well into champions, but it might make the difference between fourths and thirds, and possibly seconds and firsts. So we'll do all right. <laughs>